Alright, so you've just installed this game, Inflation RPG, and either you're just playing it for the first time, or for a lot of people it seems like maybe you played it a long time ago, back in, say, 2015, 2016 or something, and you remembered it recently, and you decided to reinstall it. But either way, there's a pretty decent chance you c really have no idea what you're doing. Um, this video does assume that before really starting to play the game, you're checking for YouTube guides or tutorials. Um, which is fair enough, this game can be a bit daunting, there is just a, like a decent amount of stuff. Like if you look at this, why are there so many question marks? But it's not that complicated when you know what you're doing. So might as well just get started on doing things. So the very first thing you want to do before even needing to start a run really is firstly go to settings and hit the rating button and then go into statistics and hit the tweet button. You don't actually have to read or tweet about the game. The game just checks that or whether you've hit those buttons and it does have like in-game use, having hit them, but we'll get to that in a bit. So when you first hit start game, you'll see this 4x4 grid of characters. This is the character select screen. Uh, it looks different after your first run. I'll show that towards the end of the video, after the first run's done. But basically, without explaining too much just yet, these are the two characters that matter. So the middle two on the top row. So Grey Hair is effectively the best for just raw killing things. He is the best stat boosts for that. Uh, characters get stat boosts based on where they are in the grid. Um, and at each edge has a different like stat it's attributed to, and the middle is attributed to HP, and it's basically how close, like which of those the character is closest to, and how close it is to them. But effectively, Grey hair and orange hair are the two best. Grey hair is the best for just sheer killing things. Uh, and orange hair is close, like really, really close. Like you could play with either of the two here and not really notice a difference in how much killing stuff you can do. But orange hair also has a slight luck boost that grey hair doesn't have, which for farming purposes is really good because it just means more gold and more drops. So either of these two characters can get you all the way through the entire game. I went from start to finish on my own save with grey hair, but orange hair is just kind of better for the first run at the very least for sure, so we'll play with orange hair and get started. So you get a tutorial message here explaining how battle points, or can just be shortened to BP, um, how they work. So you start a run with 30, fighting something costs 1 BP at the, like, basically an entry cost of any fight. Um, losing docks you an extra 2 BP, so if you lose a fight you will lose 3 BP compared to the one you would usually. And killing a boss gives you an amount of BP back, but you're still docked one for starting the fight, so say if the game says, oh you got 3 BP from killing this boss, if you kill it and you started the fight with 20 BP, you will end it with 30 because you gained 3 and you lost one for starting the fight. Uh, the amount you'll get varies based on the boss, but we'll get there in a bit. Uh, once you hit 0 BP, the run ends and you get to the game over screen where you can do whatever you need with your gear and buy anything you need to, or rearrange your sets, anything like that, and then just hit the title screen button to end the run, see if anything that happened in that run, and be able to move on to start another one from that progress. You'll keep gear and character levels, which again we'll get to later, um, those persist three runs. Level and gold do not. So that's why it's important to buy anything you need to before just clicking through game over and ending the run while you still have that money. I've been moving around for no reason. So the first thing you'll want to actually do is open this screen and use this. This is a daily money bonus. This is the one time where it's really got any significant use. So you'll get somewhere from like 4,500 to 5,000 gold. That 
that's fine. There is some variance, but if you don't get as much as me or anything like that, don't worry about it too much because it's literally always going to be enough to get the things you want initially. So just go into your equipment screen and get a buoy knife as your weapon, an iron armor as your armor, and to fill out the one accessory slot you have, you can get a luck gem. So this is what your set should look like after using that first daily money bonus and getting everything you need to with it. So this is what you should be starting with, and just take a fight in the level 1 area. So there is exact routing for the entire first run fight by fight that works regardless of anything as long as you do everything else right. Like works regardless of drops, like how lucky or unlucky you get in fights or anything, so we're just going to use that exact routing since it really just works better than anything you're anyone else with god knows how much playtime could improvise. So after that fight, uh, first fight in the level 1 zone, you'll get a pop-up that I kind of skipped through before explaining it, saying that you've got stat points. So stat points are massively important. You get 4 per level up. I have 88 here from 22 levels from 1 to 23. Um, and you spend these on like increasing your stats so that you can kill more things, advance through zones. That's how levels make you more powerful, through stat points. Um, there's an option in settings that we'll get to in a sec that lets you automatically open this screen after any fight that you win, so that you can just stat immediately. And it saves a couple of clicks after every fight when you have it on, unless obviously you don't need to stat stuff and you can just sprint through a bit of the game, but for now you'll want to be statting after every fight. So. How you use stat points is really simple for pretty much the entire game. Um, half your stat points should go into attack via this button, and then split the other half of your stat points that are left 50-50 between HP and defense, so like so. Uh, you can hit one half button and then the other's all button. Uh, this is how you'll want to use stat points for pretty much any run at any point in the game, with some specific exceptions that we'll get to way down the line. and a pretty common exception that we'll get to later in this run, but we're not there yet. So the next fight you're taking should be on level 25 after using those stat points. And after this fight and all the fights in the run, make sure to use those stat points just the same way as from the first fight um, for every fight. I'll do that and then I'll show the setting to auto open the stat screen that I forgot about. So you go into settings, it's the after the battle button. So option 1, 2, and 3 here. Option 1 has it auto show the stat menu after running a fight. Option 2 basically shows instead of the stat menu, auto shows a kind of yes no prompt saying, do you want to go to stats or do you want to just like go back to the overworld immediately? And then option 3 is just nothing shows up and you'd have to menu yourself. So I'd rather put option 1 on here. So then you go into level 72. There's a money times 3 bonus here, which is nice since we are going to be trying to get a bit of money at the start of the run, that's why we get the luck jam and everything. But it's not enough for anything yet, although the game does say you should buy a weapon, but can't just yet. So after that fight in level 72, we're going to go down a zone here into this other map and take a fight in level 90. So the exact path here that I'm taking is up in this notepad to the kind of upper right of my emulator. This is just why I'm playing the game on. It's, I don't know, playing games is just better on a computer, I guess. So, after that fight in level 90, even though this is, like, it does seem a bit spooky because it's a level decently higher than what you are, but you're going to want to go to level 172, go back up into the right, and well, you will win this fight. I've not gotten particularly lucky in any way. I did get a crit in that fight, but even without it, I can tell you 100% I would have lived. So you actually want to take two fights in here to prepare for the next zone you're going to. And you're still standing the same way throughout. So after that, standing again, you'll want to go into this desert map cross that bridge and take a fight in the first zone of it, which is level 220. Um, the next place you're going is back over the bridge again and all the way to the left side of the spawn map, so you want to kind of just stay close to the bridge instead of going all the way across. 
So I already have 6,000 gold, which is enough to make the next purchase that you'd want. But I'll wait until after the following fight where you'll always have 6,000 gold. I got a random encounter there. That's just a bit unlucky, but it doesn't really... It's kind of inconsequential. Like, that just means you have one last BP to gold farm with later on, which still isn't a good thing, but it's... Don't bother resetting a run over it. It's honestly fine. It'll just... That'll happen at every point in the game. So, now that you will also have 7,000... Or 6,000 gold, rather. What you want to buy, misclick there, is an iron sword as your next weapon upgrade. Which will just give you the stats to continue on this writing that gets you to your kind of end gold farm zone decently fast with more BP than you're going to have with any other real path. So in this map on the left you'll want to take two extra fights in level 300 after taking one fight in the spawn maps level 300. I don't really know what the difference is or why but I, I could not come up with pathing better than this I would be pretty sure so that's not really in my place to care. So after that second fight, you're going to go into level 470 here, and you're going to take two fights in here. That looked like it got a little close, but not really. Like, fights can look close through this run, but don't be discouraged. That's just because it's that well optimized, really. You, If you lose a fight just through sheer bad luck, it's probably a whole lot of bad luck, and it's not really worth caring too much about. Um, so after the two fights in 470, you'll want to take three and 630 here. And these are the last fights you'll take in this map for, at least for this run. So many enemies in early game that just with like end game stuff, you're pretty much just just killing the bosses at this point in the game and not really caring. There's so many more just mob sprites in this game than you remember. So this will be the third fight in seven, no, in six thirty. So after this, we're moving on to kill the first boss of the entire game. The first of uh, a solid many, so I'm going to move to level 710 here. So this guy, this is Joisting Red Panda. Um, everyone just shortens his name to Panda because one word is less effort than three. This is the first boss in the game by, by a decent chunk the easiest. And with the stats you have from having finished your third fight in 630, you will already be able to kill him. If I die here, I eat stinky poop, but you know. Yeah, no, it's fine. Looks like there is a, an outside chance of dying on that fight if you get bad enough like damage rolls, but it's not a big deal. Even if you do, just fight him again and you'll probably kill him. Uh, so with that kill, you get this pop-up. Uh, base level 1. So base levels contribute to your character's stat boosts along with the character levels that I'll talk a bit about at the end of the run. You'll get them as you go through the game and kill certain key bosses. It's not really anything to worry about, but where you know you can pick them up, you should. So, the next fight you're taking should just be in the bottom right corner here of 710, just to get a shorter run to the next zone you're going to. Only given, only gave me 27 levels, but that's not a big deal. Uh, so, once you have 7,000 gold after buying Iron Sword, You'll want to buy an extra accessory slot and an extra luck gem to put in it. Oh my god, I'm terrible at this game. That that wasn't that wasn't planned at all. I might actually not make it here. Okay, no, I did. So here you've got this kind of grid here looking area. So there are two zones here. This if you just go over this bridge, you can go immediately just a wee bit up or a wee bit down. So up is to 1222, which is where you want to be first, before going to the lower zone, which is 1333. 
it's kind of a diagonal grid, so you can see if I go one down and one right, I'm still in 1222. If I go to 1333 and I go one down and one right, I'm still in 1333. So after one fight in 1222, you can handle 1333, I think. I have less HP than I remember normally having here. But no, I still win the fight with a couple of hits. It's, could still have taken a couple of extra hits and been fine. But with this currently, I'm pretty sure set is fine. Yeah, so now you're sitting in the farm, the kind of gold farm zone of this run in 1333. So this is where the run, I guess, gets a bit boring really, because m most of the rest of the run, unless you get something interesting, which you might not actually know how to deal with yet, is the run now is mostly just sitting in 1333, and now that you can safely kill the zone, the stuff in the zone you're gold farming in, after statting attack, defense, HP for a couple extra fights in here, just to be sure, you should be statting full luck. Just put all your stat points into luck for the rest of the runs, so that you're kind of just accumulating more gold as you go, because there's no point in putting more points into combat stats when there's nothing higher up to kill now that you want to and speaking of i almost just put points in those anyway so there are no bonuses in any zone right now so what i'm gonna do is use this this is the other kind of daily bonus other than daily money bonus this one's useful for the entire game instead of just the very start so when someone says oh i'm gonna use a daily this is basically always what they're referring to so that spawns a bonus on every zone on the map you're currently on. So if I went to where Panda was, there wouldn't be a bonus on his zone because it's not in the map I was on when I used this. So this is actually also why you read and tweet. So I can't remember which does which, but one of them, one of hitting one of the two buttons gives you an extra bonus per day, and the other gives you an extra per game. So normally this would be you have five per day and you can only use one per game, but an extra daily bonus per game is really, really good in some places. And having six per day just means that you can change time less often. Also, something really important, you can change date and time and full this game. Um, so if you, say, are out of daily bonuses and you go a day forward, you will get them all back and then you can go back and just go forward to the same date repeatedly. So date shifting does fill this game. So this is a question mark mob. There are three groups of mobs that can be spawned out of a question mark bonus. Um, basically what it does is give any fights in there for the while the bonus is on, gives them a chance to spawn a bonus mob. Uh, and any given question mark bonus can be on one of three groups. There's group A, which is the one this is on. Uh, Usually the generalization for group A is that they all look like kind of sucky by They're all women. <laughs> to put it a dumbass way, they're all women. And they all drop accessories. Now, this could be really, really funny because this one's the one you really want. This mob and her drop is the reason why until you have her drop, you take every question mark bonus you find, no matter what your run is supposed to be doing. So she drops her covering lackle, so she gives you 4% life steal. That is so broken. Oh my god, I actually just... <laughs> okay. So, that's like a 4 or 5% drop. Not high with a lot of luck. I'm actually going to screenshot this and just put it on the Discord server once this run is over because that's genuinely insane. I've never had a first run recovery necklace before. I'm not going to use it until a few videos later. But it's extremely powerful. Now, with this on its own, I could probably unlock hard mode, like get level 100,000 in four runs as opposed to like two or three. Actually, just to demonstrate how broken it is, for one fight, I'm gonna replace the luck gem with it, or one of the two luck gems. Um, now, obviously, if you get this in your own gameplay and you're lucky enough to have this happen to you, do abuse it. Don't do what I'm doing just for the sake of demonstration, right? Because, oh, I'm actually not getting much HP back at all. I'm probably gonna die here, but still. I would have died immediately if I didn't have recovery on. I would have been 6 shot and I got like 12 shot. So I'll take that off. But yeah, for drops that are entirely unplanned like that one, I'm not going to make use of them until it would make sense to. So 
I'm probably going to wait until I almost have hard mode unlocked to actually start using that recovery. But that's that's absolutely amazing. So there's a half there's an enemy attack time 0.5 bonus in here which I'll try to abuse Reko again. It's recovery necklace is shortened to Reko a lot for kind of obvious reason. Um so half attack especially once you have recovery necklace is easily the best bonus you can get on something if you just want to kill something in that zone, especially a boss. Um, the only bosses in the game that can't, that half attack doesn't really make feasible are the last three bosses in the entire game in hard mode, which we know from the developer literally weren't intended to be killable. Um, so if it's possible, it's possible with half attack and kind of recovery necklace strats. So yeah, I got that kill. Even though it was a really long fight, I still have almost full HP because of that, and the bonus actually chinned into another turn of half attack, which is kind of funny. So you can see, I had, I think it was 4 BP when that fight happened, and I'm up to 10. So Sphinx gives 7 BP from, that would be 40 11, but obviously you spend 1 BP on starting the fight. I'm pretty sure Panda gives 3 to make you gain two. But now I'm gonna switch that back to a luck gem again. I'm gonna stop kind of <laughs> cheating and abusing Raiko. And for the rest of the fight I'm basically just gold farming. I have a lot more gold than you normally would currently because of those question mark mobs. Grip B drops a lot more money than anything else. Grip A have accessory drops like, well, you know, and Grip C, which only spawn from, I believe, level 5,000 or level 2,000 zone onward, drop weapons and armors, but they're not really something you care about until a lot later in the game. So this um, question mark bonus, actually that last mob, and this one as well, this is question mark Grip B, and oh my god, I'm actually going to die. So I actually died to that because that enemy was just too strong. Question mark mobs are fairly strong on your first run, but even still, like you can see, I could kill Grip A mobs by the time I reach 1333, so they're not that strong. It's still, by the time you get here, absolutely take any question mark bonus you see, because A, you can get recovery, and B, you can just get a lot of money no matter what grip or question mark mob it is. So now I have about 180,000 gold, so I've got to, I should really spend it, so I'm going to unlock another accessory slot because anytime you can unlock an accessory slot, you should, really. Um, except maybe the 30k one immediately, but generally if you can unlock an accessory slot or also a set slot, which you can have different sets of gear and accessories, which becomes massively useful really fast. You, Anytime you can unlock a slot, that should be your first priority. So. I'm going to put on an HP gem plus one in that third accessory slot, which will come into a lot of use in the next run. And I'm going to buy an iron axe as a weapon upgrade and a skill armor as an armor upgrade. So now for the start of next run, I'll be able to go get here a lot faster because instead of having like 100 HP, like 40 attack and I think like 30 defense, I'll have a couple thousand attack a chunk over a thousand defense and two thousand HP plus the character bonus from uh, Orange Air. Same thing applies to attack, obviously. So I'll try this again. If I get the harder enemy, I'll probably have a chance actually now that I have a better weapon and armor. But yeah, God, getting recovery actually just turned this completely upside down. I kind of feel like I have to keep this save now. I have re-recorded this a couple times because the video just ended up longer than I wanted it to be, but it seems like I should be able to f close this video out in under half an hour, which is just better. So the run's almost over, so I'll close it a bit after the first run ends and ex explain another couple things before then, but I'll link a couple things in the description. Firstly, I'll link the Farming Recommendations wiki page, which is a really, really comprehensive like text format guide that'll walk you 
right through the entirety of early game. Um, I'll also link an invite to the IRPG Discord server, which basically contains everyone with like a big amount of game knowledge. And if we can talk to you directly on Discord, it makes a, it a lot easier to give you advice that you can apply because it's just m massively easier to give good advice when you're not basically pre-recording something in this kind of way, when you're not guessing you know how much stuff and knowledge the person you're advising has. So I have about 25,000 gold here, so I'll buy some random things. Um, actually, these are quite useful battle point rings. So for each of these you have equipped, you get an extra 1 BP. Um, these plus 1 versions give you an extra 3 BP when you have them equipped. Very important, if, you're, if you know that you will be at 0 BP without any battle point rings, don't switch to a set that doesn't have any. So if you're at, say, 2 BP left with a BP ring and you take a fight, you will not be at 0 BP with no rings on. So don't switch to like your running set without putting a ring on it. Um, but yeah, those kind of just allow you to get a little bit of extra farm done at the end of any run if you want to. Usually they're not that useful, but later on you can get BP rings that give you 7 BP each, 3 of those, and 3 that give you 5 BP each. So that's an extra... 36 BP, that's amazing. That makes runs be able to get a lot more done. But for now, this this is a pretty decent way to close it out. If you only have, say, a bronze sword, or it could still be iron sword, or you can only get steel armor instead of scale armor, because that's a pretty big jump, or you couldn't get really either of these things, don't worry about it. Um, you can still progress decently, and you can then just repeat this run but with your own slight improvements to the pathing because you'll have better gear after the first. And then you can just get these things one by one if you need to. Um, but don't be afraid to go by your own judgment either. So there's also this at the game over screen, which we are now at, character ability information. So I gained 1992 character XP, and you'll notice that's the same as the level I had. So for every one level you have at the end of a run, the character you're using for that run will gain one character XP. The first character ability level, uh, like level up, is obviously to level one at ten thousand character XP. So I'd say I need a level that's, uh, it. I'd need a run that's level eight thousand and eight to get that next run. Um, and I can't see any changes really to make to my gear, so I'm just gonna close the run out here. Um. Yeah, I think that's it. And now you can look at the statistics screen. All the question marks are gone. There are numbers here, everywhere. You can see how many weapons I have, armors, accessories. And this is a snapshot of what your set was when the game over screen came up on your last, on your highest level run. Um, so if I, say, did a level, or did a run and it reached level 1000, it wouldn't show me in here the set from that. It'll show me the, the set from the end of that run just now, because that's the highest level I reached. So, that, that's confused a bit of people, it seems like, so I might as well clear that up. And that's pretty much it. I'll link farming recommendations, and I'll link the RPG Discord server invite in the description of this. Uh, this one's definitely going to YouTube, because I got um, <laughs> the most ridiculous thing that can happen in a first run. But the next video should probably be for runs maybe two and three, I'm not sure. I might actually duplicate this Nox instance, as in basically copy and paste the save onto a separate one where I just try to play the game and see how many like, few runs I can do things in now that I have a first run recovery. But either way, that's it for now. Why are you still here? Because I'm not.